30 lectures from first time you are attending class Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So we'll get started with lines and angles. Take out your books. Page number ninety nine. Shall we get started? Yeah. Okay. So this chapter is over, right? Already, and they have written a test also. Yeah. So tell me, what do you know about these chapters? So tell me, what are all the concepts that you know already? So what do we deal in this chapter? Okay. Okay. So one we call it as lines and angles. Okay. So let's try to dissect it. Let's try to break it into two parts and observe what does lines mean according to you. What does a line mean according to you? How will you define it? If I have to ask you, what is that? Line. So how will you define it actually? What is basically a line? It is a shape. So what kind of a shape is it? It is a one dimensional shape, which gets extended in, which gets extended in both the directions, right? So there's a known factor. So if I take this to be the line, then how do you represent it? You will put arrow marks at the end of it. Right. Right.
right this about a line right now what are the other one dimensional figures that we are going to deal with one dimensional ma triangle is two dimensional you talk about a ray so what is a ray it is also one dimensional shape which has which has a starting point but no ending point which has a starting point but no ending point so what is the diagrammatic representation of it starting point is always mm -hmm. represented with a dot so a fixed dot represents a starting position and the arrow mark represents never ending position okay so on the ray if i take a point p then how can i represent a ray as so if i have to give the name of a ray i will call it as ab with an arrow mark on top of it so you read it as a array ab right no 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 see generally when you go to higher standard right you will understand that ray is a directed line segment means if a line segment has a direction that is what is called as a ray okay so just to one, one more point to add if i take two points on the line to be ab then i can represent it as ab with a line on top of it that is called line ab similarly if you put a ray on top of it you call it as ray ab right then what is there then you have something called as a line segment what does a segment mean segment is basically a part so segment is part okay right so from a line if i am able to take a part then what will it have it will have a fixed length associated with it right so that fixed length how do you write it as so line segment is just written as ab where a represents the starting point and b represents the ending point i made a mistake see for line segment only you put a line on top of this this is for a line you will put two arrow marks okay and here for a line segment it is written as ab with a bar on top of it with a, with a line on top of it okay so generally where do we use line segment is suppose i tell you draw if you have to do some construction have you ever done done some construction let's say i am asking you to draw a circle of radius 5 cm right so what does that radius represent radius is basically the line segment because it is from a line you are taking a part of 5 cm and for that 5 cm you are drawing the curvature called as a circle right so that is how it works so for any line segment you have a starting point as well as ending point for a ray you have only a starting point but no ending point for line you have no starting point and no ending point as well right then you have collinear points so what are collinear so linear is straight line co represents same so co is same and linear is a line linear is derived from the term line so on a line if i have three points then those three points are said to be collinear points collinear means a uh, points points lying on the same line or called collinear points lying on the same line are said to be collinear so for points there is no notation just a b c you write it like this a comma b comma c are collinear that's it then obviously what will be the counter part of it counter means what is non collinear right so non collinear means 
So three or more points. So generally, when you say non-collinear, right, the minimum number of collinear or non-collinear, the minimum number of points that are required are three, because two points will always be collinear. Because what are the minimum number of points that are required for you to draw a line? Two, right? More than two only the question starts. A and B are collinear, okay? What about the third point? Is it lying on the same line or not? If the third point also lies, then you will say A, B, C are collinear. If they don't lie, you say they are not collinear. You will not draw a line. You cannot draw. See, for example, this is one line. I take this point as A. I take this point as B. They are not collinear because they are not lying on the same line. They are lying on a line for sure, but they are not lying on the same line. So they are not collinear. Right. Here comes the next term with respect to this chapter.
Yes. So we'll discuss what an angle is. See, if I have one ray like this, okay, on top of which, let's say I have another ray. Okay. Let's say this is one ray and this is another ray. Now what I'm going to do is I'll keep I'll keep one of them fixed and rotate one with respect to another. When I start rotating in this way, then what is the second ray subtending with respect to the first? So what is what can you define between them? What is this? That is what is called as angle, right? So angle basically is defined as the amount of rotation made by one line with respect to another. Rotation made by one line with respect to an other. Are you able to understand what I'm trying to say? So for you to define an angle, one line has to get revolved with respect to another. Why am I using line again, line or array, whatever it is? Right. Why am I using that word? Because you cannot define an angle between a line and a point, can you? So if I ask, if I ask there is a line and there is a point on it, what is the angle between both? The question doesn't make sense, right? Similarly, I have a line and I have another line like this. If I ask you the angle between them, what will you say? Only thing is you need to construct it. So when you extend it, you will be able to understand that how much can you say that the second line is rotated with respect to the first line, then that rotation is what you call it as an angle, right? Basically, if you go to higher classes, right, you will be learning about angles in detail. Angles, like how you dealt in coordinate geometry, right? Positive x-axis, negative x-axis, positive y and negative y. Angles also have sign. Angles also have sign associated. So in mathematics, so when I say in mathematics, I can talk about signs also. So in mathematics and signs, angles measured in anti-clockwise direction are considered to be positive. So if you measure an angle in the anti-clockwise direction, you consider it to be positive. Okay. Similarly, if you are able to measure the angles, protractor or see, generally, I'll, I'll come to that point. Angles measured, first write down this point. Angles measured in clockwise direction are considered to be negative. Okay. Have this in your mind. Okay. This is point here. Right. Now, when it comes to, uh, once I finish the types of angles, I'll, I'll come to this point. So what are the types of angles that you people know? So start from zero. So you can look at the MTG book. It is in page number 100. So what is the first type of angle? So when you take the measure, okay, measure, name, and illustration. So illustration means the diagrammatic representation. If the measure of a particular angle is greater than zero degree and less than 90 degree, what do you call that angle as? You call it as an acute angle. And how does an acute angle look like? So if this is one ray and you have another ray, I'm just going with the textbook part, but I hope you understood that you can draw it between lines also. Right? So if this angle, let's say it is X. Okay. Then this X value by looking at the diagram, you can say it is definitely greater than zero, less than 90 degrees. Can I say that? Yes. Next is, if the value of x is exactly 90 degree, what do you call that angle as? So it's a hyphenated word. You call it as right 
angle so what is the right angle exactly if one of the rays is making an angle of 90 degrees so how is the right angle represented with the box right and you write that as 90 degree what about greater than 90 so x is greater than 90 degree but less than 180 degree you call it as obtuse angle so how does it look like one ray will be like this and the other ray will be in this format so here x is obtuse make sense we we'll connect all the dots okay similarly if x is greater than 180 degree but less than 270 degree what do you call this as you call this as a reflex angle oh sorry 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 yeah tell me it's still a reflex angle i'll come to that as it's still a reflex angle i'll tell you how it works okay means for the obtuse angle if you find the angle on the other side this will become the reflex angle are you able to visualize how reflex angle and obtuse angle are related so between two lines this will be obtuse if you do the same measurement on the other side they become reflex illa yeah. vertically opposite one another for a parallel line you need to draw a transverse they should lie on either side of the transverse not this draw and show they are not how oh. yes they will not be how will they be equal if they are equal then it will become obtuse and reflex uh, they, they both will be obtuse no see you want me to prove it diagrammatically i'll prove and show so what do you mean by 180 degrees when one ray and the other ray in this format right so in the software i don't have rotation part i'll show you i'll show you a small animation that yeah, those people important in your area what software is this listen this is one ray this is another ray right so how does they look like so it is 180 degrees right so if i tilt it less than this okay remember remember this angle is 180 how much is this angle 180 because it completes now this was 180 when i moved it this side can i say this angle is less than 180 then what should happen to this angle it is greater than 180 how can a greater than value and less than value become equal according to you correct ah make sense okay yeah. okay that's what is called as reflex angle and the last one we call it as if x is equal to 360 degree you call it as a complete angle straight angle is 180 degrees I didn't write one eighty. Here. here I forgot one eighty. X is equal to one eighty is what is called as straight angle. If 
it's called straight angle because that's what a straight line makes that's what two rays in a straight line make right so i explained about this point right now you ask me a question angles measured in clockwise and anti clockwise direction you ask me is it with respect to protractor no i'll tell you how it works so there are two chapters that we can connect it here if i take this to be the basic coordinate system okay so with respect to coordinate geometry in terms or in language of coordinate geometry how will you represent a point in the first quadrant positive comma positive but the same line or same point with respect to a line or an angle can be defined can we imagine can we try visualizing it <coughs> observe i have a basic coordinate axis like this okay x axis x dash y axis and y dash then i have a ray here okay where i'm saying this is a ray with a fixed value or if you get confused you want me to draw a line segment itself you are fine with this okay now if i say this ray is revolved in the which direction did i revolve what is this direction called as counter clockwise or anti clockwise right so when you revolve it you are able to see that there is an angle x subtended here so what is the information you can give about this angle from the table that we prepared now x is greater than 0 and less than 90 degree and is this angle positive or negative according to the definition i gave you so if there is a positive acute angle made by a ray with x axis i repeat if there is a positive acute angle made by a ray with x axis what can i say about the ray in which quadrant is the ray lying are you able to understand so instead of using coordinate geometry if you want to use the euclid geometry to explain in which quadrant that particular line is belonging to then you can say that the ray is revolved in the anti clockwise direction through an angle of through an angle value whose less than 90 degrees okay suppose the same ray is revolved in this direction okay now this angle is there sorry now you are measuring this angle and what can you say about this x now it is greater than 90 degrees less than 180 degrees so if i give you an angle of plus 120 degrees okay i'm saying imagine there is a line which is making an angle of plus 120 degrees with the x axis so what will you imagine that line is in the second quadrant okay we so want it to be negative huh? no it is not negative i told plus 120 i put plus 120 no positive means counter clockwise and 120 is the obtuse angle are you able to understand suppose you want to represent something in the third quadrant what i can do is i can do the same revolution and i'll take this angle to be y where where if i say what is minus 120 degrees what will you say minus sign indicates with respect to x axis the line is revolved in the clockwise direction and in the clockwise direction you have stopped in which quadrant third quadrant suppose they say the angle is minus 45 degrees so minus sign indicates clockwise direction and obtuse angle corresponds to fourth quadrant are you able to understand so that is why angles also have direction which you will be learning about in depth when you go to higher standards right to some extent you are able to visualize why you are actually learning this right so in this chapter we are only going to develop our basics to understand if different kinds of scenarios are there how do i find the relations between different angles that's it so that is why this chapter is given for you ninth standard okay because you will have a lot of application of this in your 10th also especially in physics and all the other parts you will have it you will have a chapter called as light reflection and refraction last year you would have learned to know about plane mirror and other things you have learned what is angle of incidence angle of reflection so there we are defined angle 
so incident ray we use the word ray right we use the word normal right you know all these things right so all are related to this chapter so this chapter's basic is important for you to solve problems in other departments also is it clear right now when you uh -huh. complete angle is 360 degrees right? okay so one ray is like this and the other ray is other ray is overlapping so you take the other keep the first ray fixed take the other ray revolve it in anti clockwise direction through 360 degrees where will the second ray come and meet again come back to the original position but how much to revolve 360 degrees okay you have revolved it no that is why i use the word angle is a measure of revolution for example if i have to go slightly deeper right if i if i keep the first ray fixed and if i rotate the second ray two times what is the angle if i rotate the line twice how much is the angle i have covered forget about minus or plus i am not i am not getting into the concept i am not getting into the concept of uh, anti clockwise or clockwise i am saying if one line is there the second one line is fixed the second line is revolved two times in a complete circle so what you told is right only 360 into 2 720 degrees just because they come and overlap are you going to say zero degrees no because that 720 degrees is telling the person who's reading your paper that one line is revolved with another twice in 360 degrees so if i say 1080 what will you say it is revolved twice but what will happen both the rays will again come and meet at the same point but how much rotation have you made three times you rotated through 360 degrees that is the meaning Prida. yeah so next is intersecting and non intersecting lines so obviously what do you mean by intersecting if they have a common point you call them as intersecting lines if they do not have a common point then you are going to call them as non intersecting lines generally non intersecting lines are parallel to each other because those are the lines which will meet each other at which point so parallel lines meet at infinity parallel lines meet each other at infinity okay we're almost done now we need to see the pair of angles so what are the different pairs of angles that you have sorry pairs of angles mm -hmm. infinity infinity is not a point which you can define that is why it would infinity yes sir but infinity has one value you tell me a number what is infinity what is the value you tell me a number i'll add plus 1 to it you tell me one followed with 15 zeros i'll say plus 1 infinity is asking it does, doesn't have an end point not defined it's called indeterminate form it's called indeterminate form means you cannot find the answer for it it is not defined clearly zero or zero is not defined okay so pairs of angles the first pair that you are going to see are complementary angles so what are complementary angles Yes, if two angles, if A plus B is equal to 90 degrees, then A and B are said to be complementary of complementary of each other. Is that clear? Then what are supplementary angles? When two angles sum up to 180 degrees, you call them as supplementary. A and B are said to be supplementary. One power zero. One, one power zero is okay. You have something to do with permutations and combination. Maybe we'll have a discussion about it later. Then again, deviate. Again, deviate from the topic. Okay.
because it has something to do with logarithms and all those things also i'll come to that so next is you have something called as adjacent angles the names are suggesting the name is suggesting adjacent means see they you both are adjacent to each other beside right so the, the angles are beside each other you call them to be adjacent right if you look at the diagram so if you look at the diagram that is given you have one ray like this you have another ray like this and there is a third ray which is starting from the common point okay if i take this angle as a and this angle as b what can i say about these two angles they are adjacent because they are beside each other a and b are adjacent angles okay next is a linear pair so linear pair has something to do with supplementary angle yeah so if there is a line okay on this line you are able to draw a ray okay if i take this angle to be a then how much will this angle be it is 180 minus a because the sum of both those angles should be 180 degrees as they form a straight angle is that right so there is a th there is an axiom called as linear pair axiom so what is an axiom what is the difference between axiom and theorem yeah. theorem is basically a statement with proof axiom statement with proof you give a statement for which you have a proof whereas axioms are statements without proof okay you not have a proof for it right so what is the axiom one that speaks about so it says if a ray stands on a line then the sum of the adjacent angles so form this 180 degrees right because they form a linear pair if you have to give a proof for it there is not a big proof that is going to exist so what did they say if a ray i suggest you to write it stands please tell me because that statement makes sense because that statement it has see this if you take this as a proof yes you can say this as a proof because it forms a straight angle that's what the diagram says now right so if a ray stands on a line then the sum of adjacent angles so what are the adjacent angles here a and 180 minus a the sum of the adjacent angles so formed are 180 degrees so there is another axiom if sum of adjacent angles is 180 degrees what can you say it is just a reverse then the common arms then the common arms of the angles form a straight line then the common arms of the angles form a straight line right right then you have something called as vertically opposite angles so voa is the short form that i gave okay so what are the vertically opposite angles how do how are they represented okay when two lines are intersecting each other they have a common point okay what to do with that common point 
this. So there are four angles that are formed. Out of the four angles, definitely, unless they meet at right angles, out of the four angles, one will be acute and one will be obtuse. Right? So this is acute. And you have another acute exactly on the opposite side. Right? And you have an obtuse. And you have another obtuse angle exactly on the opposite side. So the acute angle is equal to acute and the obtuse is equal to obtuse. Okay. So having this knowledge, can we do an example problem? So the illustration that is given in page 101, illustration number one. So what are they saying? ACB is a line. Okay. ACB is a line. So on a line, take points A, C, B is a line. DCA is 5x. So D is a point. When you join D to C, I can say DCA is 5x and DCB is 4x. They are adjacent angles. Find the value of x and hence find the angles. Simplest problem. Right? So 9x will be equal to 180 degrees, which implies x is equal to 20. So what is going to be 5x? It is 100. And 4x is obviously going to be 80. That's the sum of both is 180. Right? Mm -hmm. Then this will be 4x. Yeah, same logic. 4x plus 5x. You want to add everything and do it? Yeah, you, can, you can use that. You will do the same thing. Though. See, what you're doing is 9x is 180. If you add 5x to 5x, you will get 2 times 5x. 4x to 4x, 2 times 4x. So 2 into 5x plus 4x is equal to 180 into 2. So that's what you're writing it as 360. What is the use of it? 2 and 2 will anyway get cancelled. But if you want to do, we can do it. That's up to you. Uh, you want to use it? Okay. Right. So shall we try the next one? If the supplement of an angle is two-third of itself. So let the angles be x comma 180 minus 6. They are supplementary of each other. If supplement of an angle, so 180 minus x is equal to two-third of itself, 2 by 3 of x, then what is the value of angle and its supplement? So 180 minus x, uh, 180 mi uh, minus x is 2 by 3x. So 180 will be how much? 5x by 3, which implies x is equal to 5 will cancel 180 how many times? 36 times. So 36 into 3 is going to be 108. If x is 108, 180 minus x will be 72 degrees. So what can you conclude? That these two are the angles, right? See, suppose if I take the reverse mathematical operation, will it work? I took 180 minus x as supplementary is equal to 2 by 3 of x. Can I do it in an alternate way also? In the sense, if I say x is equal to two-third of 180 minus x, will I get the same answer? You will? We should see. So 3x is equal to 360 minus 2x, which implies 5x is equal to 360. So x is equal to 72. So here I got x108, here 72. Why? has nothing to do with x is only a variable that is why in the question they clearly mentioned find the angle and its supplement also because when you take x as the angle 180 minus x is a supplement of x if you take 180 minus x as the angle then x is a supplement of 180 minus x so they are the supplement of each so however you do you will get the same answer but you should not compare the previous value of x and the other value because x is only a variable. You need to see, yeah, both are right. Both are right. Because when you're reporting both the answer, you're getting one of the angles as 72 and the other is 108. X has nothing to do with 
x is only a variable we choose to solve the problem are you able to understand so i hope there is no confusion no yeah clear so please make a note of it lines ab cd and ef are meeting obviously at point o right so what are we supposed to find this angle is 40 degree this angle is 35 degree what are they asking angle aoc aoc is this angle let me call this as x cof let me call this as y and bof let me call this as z so what is the value of x your favorite angle da yes so x is 35 what about z z is z is 40 because both of them form vertically opposite angles then what about y x plus y plus z is 180 X is thirty-five, Z is forty. So Y plus seventy-five is equal to one hundred eight. Then Y will be equal to one hundred five degrees. Simple problem, right? Last but one part of the structure. So they removed this angle sum property of a triangle and exterior angle, right? In your CBSE, not a big deal. We'll be using that many places. Anyway, before that, we will see what is the transverse. Is it always be, supposed to be parallel? So read the statement. Read the definition of this. Next page. So what is the transverse? Yes. So you define the angles for a special case. so if you have two lines right like this and if there is a third line which is cutting both the lines at two distinct points you call that as a transverse okay so you are learning about different angles right what are the different angles you have like corresponding angles alternate interior angles co interior angles all these things they are defined for a straight line like for two parallel lines parallel lines okay so then, then you need to solve the problem only based on vertically opposite angle and adjacent angles the it will be the so they will, they will they will they will only ask you about they will ask you to find the angles which are possible they will not put some random question there will be some hit in the problem you need not worry about it. person who is creating will take the hit but you will definitely have the hint where you will be able to find the problem Okay, but you cannot define these kind of angles, corresponding angles at all. You cannot speak because they are not parallel lines. Don't talk.
or they have a certain relation between them right if suppose i say 1 and 2 they are they are linear pair and they are adjacent angles also right similarly if i talk about 2 and 4 they are vertically opposite angles similarly if i talk about 1 and 2 uh, sorry 1 and 2 is 4 1 and 3 is vertically opposite okay so like this we will try to define so that is with respect to one line only so i saw the angles between 1 2 3 4 for a single line Now, what about the angles between different lines? If suppose I take to angle two and angle six, what can I tell about them? They are they are corresponding angles. So basically, what are corresponding angles? Yes. So similarly, what are the other two corresponding angles? Three and five. Four and seven are corresponding, and one and eight are corresponding angles. All these are corresponding angles. The next kind of a pair that we have are alternate interior angles. So, what are the alternate interior angles? So look, one and one and eight, uh, one and six, sir. Uh. They, what is alternate? One and five. So with respect to the transversal, one angle will be on one side, the other will be on the opposite side, and they should be interior. Interior to whom? Interior to both the lines. So what are the one and five, four and six? Then that's it. right so similarly what can you define you can you define something called as co interior angles so what are co interior angles co means same so they lie on the same side so what are the interior angles 1 6 4 so 1 and 6 form a pair 4 5 form a pair right that's it so similarly do you have anything called as co exterior co exterior angles what are they okay 2 and 8 3 and 7 right they are co exterior angles right so there is something called as parallel line theorem which is logically known to us already this because it's in book i'm explaining it what are what are the parallel line theorem say lines which are parallel to the same line are parallel to each other simplest it's a simple logic right if you draw two lines parallel to each other and you draw a third line which is parallel to both the lines right so they are parallel to each other that's it is it clear right and we'll finish the other concepts also that is properties of triangles yes so what are the properties of triangles one is called as angle sum property of a triangle so angle sum property of a triangle that is what is the statement guys read it some of the three interior angles of a triangle are so some of the three 
interior angles is 180 degrees. Right. So there is another property called as exterior angle property of a triangle. So what does it state? Any idea? So if I have a triangle, right, where one of these is extended. Okay, let me say this is A, B and C. Okay, if this angle is A, then how much is this angle? 180 minus A. Okay, for example, this 180 minus A, I'm calling it as X. Okay, if I, this angle is B and this angle is C, then the statement goes like this. Statement is exterior angle is equal to the sum of opposite interior angles. Opposite interior angles. Underline the word opposite. So X is there, right? So with respect to the side X, uh, with respect to the angle X, what are the opposite angles? Opposite means which are lying on the other side. B and C. So X is equal to B plus C is what is the mathematical statement of it. So it is very simple to prove. Okay. Listen to this. So A plus B plus C is the sum of all the angles inside a triangle. So obviously 180. Right? So B plus C, can I write it as 180 minus A? But what is 180 minus A that I assume to be? That's it. That's it. That is the proof. Right. See, though it is deleted, right? It's not such a big concept that you need to ignore it. We'll use it in foundation for many problems. Are we ready to solve problems? Yes. So look at the illustrations. So illustration number five. So what is the illustration number five? Tell us. So if there are two parallel lines, L and M, and there is a transversal, this is 2x plus 16 in terms of degrees. And this is 100 degree. Now, what can you, what can I say about these two angles? How? They're alternate exterior angles. That's right. Or this 2x plus 16 can be written here also because they are corresponding angles. So 2x plus 16 and 100 are adjacent such that the sum of both those angles is 180. Right. So 2x is equal to 180 minus 116. How much is it? 64. Huh? Is that right? So x is 32. So they are asking the angles. So what will be the angle there? 32 means 64 plus 16, it will be 80 degrees. Oh, they didn't ask the angle. They determine x, x value. Well, that's it. x is 32. Right? 6. A, B. So there is a point E which is extended and you have a point F here and there is a ray drawn in this form. So this is C. This is Q and this point is P. So if this is 34 degree if this is 78 degree, uh, this angle, this angle, they, I think they are asking it. Okay, what are they asking us to find? P, D, Q. Let me call this as X. A, E, D. A, E, D, I'll call it as Y. 
P E F. I will call it as Z. Yes. And they told A B is parallel to A B is parallel to C D, and E F is parallel to D. Okay. So using that logic, solve it. How to solve? So y is thirty four. That's right. So this is thirty four. So thirty four plus z plus seventy eight should give you one eighty degrees. It forms a straight angle. How much is it? Z is sixty eight. Ah. So z is sixty eight degree. If z is sixty eight degrees. Why sixty-eight plus seventy-eight? Z and X are same. This is also equal to X. But they told A E D is thirty-four. Okay. B E F is sixty-eight. Okay. And what else did they ask? PDQ. That is also sixty. Yes. So seventh one, L, M, and N are parallel to each other. L, M, and N are parallel to each other, such that there is one line like this, and you have another line, so that this total angle is seventy degrees. This point is Q. So this point is S. This point is R. This is twenty-five degrees, right? This is P. This is Q. Okay. Find angle Q R S. Can we? Hey, this is twenty-five, and this is also twenty-five. No? Corresponding angles. Which one here? Huh? You are saying this one, no? Huh? This is twenty-five. Okay. Then. What else can we do? Seventy is equal to yes, sir. Yes, sir is blind. Where? You mean to say this angle? This is seventy. Because observe, this line and this line are not parallel to each other. They, they did they say that they are parallel? No, oh, they gave. Yeah, sorry, it's my mistake. Yeah, PQ and RS are parallel. Yes, so they have given it as parallel. Okay, if that is the case. Hmm. Tell me. Between twenty-five, this angle. Is it seventy? Ah, not seventy. How how is it seventy? You are saying this angle, ah? Huh? That is seventy. Okay. This is x minus twenty-five, ah. Huh? So now what? I, what can I say? Clear, ah? You almost you you almost got the answer, ah. Huh? Wait, wait, wait! I'll change the color. Observe, this angle is how much? Hey, seventy less than twenty-five is gone. 
it is 45 degrees right this angle is x minus 25 this angle is 25 so can i say 45 plus x is 180 degrees how much is x that's the answer that's what they ask me because it forms a straight line this is what forms a straight line no so i don't need this angle the 25 is only helping me to find what is the remaining angle But will you be able to write all the steps in the exam properly? The steps is not a problem. No? Okay. Because if I start discussing that, it will go long. Okay. If AB is parallel to CD, I have AB parallel to CD. Okay. That's what they've given, no? AB is parallel to CD. So there is a point E here, and there is a point F and G. So E to F, we have joined, E to G, we have joined. This angle is 80, this is Y, this is X, and this is 65. But, but what they're asking, x plus y is what they're asking. You, you know, you actually, that's how I told you a property. No? In a triangle, exterior angle is equal to sum of opposite interior angles. But did they ask x plus y? Then it is 80, that's it. You need not even solve that. Interior angles. So x plus y is 80 because of the theorem. Or if at all you don't get an idea, this is 80 means this is going to be 100. Is that right? So if it is 100, 100 plus x plus y is 180. 100, this is an alternate method. X is adjacent. Huh? X is adjacent. Huh? That is why I told opposite. But you can see this thing. 65 is equal to 100. See, suppose the same problem was like you find the value of X and Y independently. Okay, then you can say 65 is equal to 100 plus Y. Then how much is Y? Sorry, sorry, sorry. How can it even be equal? No, no, no. I'm sorry. It is not possible. Angle will be negative. But you can say this thing. When this is acting as a transversal, why is 65 only an alternate interior angle? Why is 65? Then X will be 15. Because 100 plus 65 plus 15 is 20. Is that clear? So let's do the ninth one. If one of the angles of a triangle is 72 degrees, so let's say A is equal to 72 degrees, the difference of the other two angles is 12 degrees. Find the other two angles. So you know that A plus B plus C is 180. So B is equal to 72 plus B, I can write it as 12 plus C. Plus C is equal to 180. So in the place of B, 84, no? 
eighty four plus two c is one eighty. So two c will be equal to one eighty minus eighty four. One eighty minus eighty is hundred. So ninety six. So c will be equal to forty eight degrees. If c is forty eight degrees, b will be equal to sixty degrees. So the three angles are seventy two, forty eight, and sixty. Add and see, they should give you one eighty. Is that clear? Tenth one. Are you guys even noting it down? So there are two lines, L and M, which are parallel to each other, and this is the point D. Where this is forty-two degrees, this is thirty-one degrees. Um, this is seventy-three degree. I didn't even read the question. What are they asking? What are they asking? Oh, show that L is parallel. Let's see. In the in the given figure, show that L is parallel to M. See, forty-two plus thirty-one. This is the exterior angle X. X is equal to how much? Sum of opposite interior angles. Forty-two plus thirty-one, which will give you seventy-three degree. If this is seventy-three and this is also seventy-three, it is only possible for them to be corresponding angles, and corresponding angles will come only for two parallel lines. That is why L is parallel to it. What is the time? So we can do one last problem. So eleven, the side BC, CA, and AB of triangle ABC are produced in order to form the exterior angles. Okay, prove that the sum of the exterior angles is three sixty degrees. Can you do that? This is one, two, three, A, B, C. Now listen, B, C. Okay, C A and A B are extended. Uh, prove that angle A C D. Prove that angle A C D. This is F and this is E. So ACD is this angle. Let me call this as X. BAE. Where is BAE? Let me call this as Y. And CBF. And let me call this as F. Let's not look at the solution. I'm not. So. What can I say? X is equal to one plus three. So one is what? A plus B. This is A B C. X is equal to A plus B. Any doubt on that? Y is equal to alternate interior angles. And what about Z? So how much is Z, guys? Z is A plus C. So X plus Y plus Z is what we need to find. That is going to be two times A plus B plus C. So, but what is A plus B plus C? So two times one eighty is going to give you this. Means sum of the exterior angles of a triangle is going to give you three sixty. Is that point here? Yes. 
So the level one problems and level two problems, can you do it fast as part of homework? I mean, homework, yeah. when you go there, yeah, class work for the next one and a half hours. So if this is over, next class we'll start Heron software. It's very simple. I'll do that, but I'm, I'm trying to come as per your AC. We have some exams, I think, is what I heard next month. September you have, no? Okay. Today only, you know, 6th, no? September 6th, no? That's what I'm saying. Ah, that's what. For that, I need to complete, no? So you have polynomials also, no? Ah, then it's better we go with the completed portion. I'll go with Heron's formula, then what else is completed? Sorry? Okay, Heron's formula, statistics is over, no? Statistics and triangles. That's it, no? You finish it, see, lines and angles, one day it is over. But uh, next class, I'll discuss for the first 20 to 20 minutes, I will discuss problems. Okay? But I want you all to sincerely work and come. The polynomials, there is nothing that simple. Don't worry. Right. So sit and work. My book. It's money. It's like Thank <laughs> you. 